Now, you probably think that fighting for the right to safe and legal abortion is an issue which affects countries such as the US, but it's also something which is happening much closer to home. In the UK, it's a criminal offence for a woman to have an abortion in Northern Ireland. Under laws passed in 1861 and 1945, it's a criminal offence for a woman to have an abortion, even if she's conceived as a result of rape or incest. Only if her life is, is in risk or there's a serious risk of permanent damage to her health is it legal. This makes Northern Ireland, along with its neighbour, the Republic of Ireland, one of the worst places in Europe for women's reproductive rights. So why is it still like this? Well, in Northern Ireland, social conservatism is still deeply ingrained in society. The largest party in the Northern Irish Parliament are the Democratic Unionists, and they're an evangelical Christian fundamentalist group who believe that they have been put in power by God in order to run Northern Ireland according to the Bible. But of course, unplanned pregnancies can happen to women for a whole host of complicated reasons, and Northern Irish women do still have abortions. Instead, they face either having to perform a DIY abortion on themselves at home by buying pills online, which can be dangerous and unlawful, or else travelling to the rest of the UK for the procedure. However, English courts recently ruled that the NHS England and Wales doesn't have to offer free abortions to Northern Irish women there. Instead, they're able to prioritise their own local residents for terminations, which essentially sends a message to Northern Irish women of, screw you, fend for yourselves. And given that travelling to England for an abortion in a private clinic can cost between £1,000 and £2,000, it's very much a class issue. Women from low-income backgrounds in Northern Ireland are denied even this access. That said, at least a thousand women every year travel to England or Wales for an abortion. Those who do often go silently and in shame for fear of the social stigma of friends and family finding out or leave legal repercussions at home, which can have a huge impact on their mental health. Now, religious fundamentalism in Northern Ireland is losing its grip in some places. A recent poll found that between 60 and 70% of people living in Northern Ireland think that abortion should be legal in the cases of, of rape, incest or a severe fetal disability. Amending the law to allow abortions in Northern Ireland in nearly these limited circumstances was put to the Northern Ireland Assembly in 2016. However, legislators rejected it. This was despite the fact that just three months previously, the Belfast High Court had ruled that Northern Ireland's abortion ban is a breach of international human rights law. The law isn't just abstract either. In April of last year, a young woman in Belfast was convicted of the crime of committing an abortion. Aged 19, she experienced an unplanned pregnancy and unable to raise enough cash in time to travel to England, she bought abortion pills online and took them at home, after which she was arrested and she was eventually given a three-month suspended sentence. British Labour MPs have called on the Conservative government to intervene and overturn the ban from Westminster. But the Conservative government says this is a matter for Northern Ireland and Northern Irish politicians to sort out themselves. So for now, Northern Ireland's abortion ban shows no sign of changing.